The best way to learn blockchain development is by building projects, but as a beginner, it's not always easy to find good project ideas. What kind of applications do people build on the blockchain? What is considered easy, hard? In which order to build these projects? In this video, I will give you 10 project ideas to learn blockchain development as a beginner. I rank these project ideas from simple to most advanced. If you don't know me, I'm Julian, and on Eat the Blocks, I teach blockchain development. When you build a blockchain app, there are two parts. There is the smart contract and there is the front end. For the following project ideas I'm going to give you, you can create both the smart contract and the front end. But the part that is the most specific to the blockchain is the smart contract, which is written with a programming language called Solidity. So a large part of learning how to build a blockchain application will be learning Solidity. When you are just learning Solidity, you can use an online tool called Remix, but when you are building a full blockchain app with a smart contract and the front end, you need to use another tool called Truffle. But if you are a beginner and you're a bit lost, you can just focus on Solidity and use Remix. The project ideas I'm going to give you are for any blockchain that is compatible with the EVM, which is the short for Ethereum Virtual Machine. So of course it will work for Ethereum itself, but also other blockchains like Binance Smart Chain. So in this video, when I mention Ether, for Binance Smart Chain, the equivalent is BNB. And when I mention ERC20 on Ethereum, the equivalent on Binance Smart Chain is BEP20. And when you are developing, you use exactly the same development tools on Binance Smart Chain as for Ethereum. The first project ID is just to do a Hello World. So if you learned programming before, you've probably done a ton of tutorial of Hello World if you don't know what it is. Basically, Hello World is just a string that say Hello World and you have many tutorials in many programming language where this is the first task. So for smart contract, this is the same thing. The most simple smart contract you can do is just a smart contract that return the string Hello World. So it will teach you the layout of a Solidity file, how to declare a contract, how to declare a function, and that will get you started. So the second project ID is to do a simple storage smart contract. So in a simple storage smart contract, you have a single variable in your smart contract, for example, an integer, and you are able to read this variable and also change its value. So now your smart contract is not read-only, but you can actually modify data. So it's slightly more advanced. The third project ID is to do a voting smart contract. So in a voting smart contract, people will be able to create a poll. In a poll, you have different choices. You'll have a voting period. Everybody will be able to vote. And at the end of the voting period, one of the choice will be the winner of the poll. With a smart contract like this, you will need to deal with addresses. You will discover more advanced data structure like map Things. You also learn how to deal with time in Solidity, so it's going to be a little bit more interesting. Just to be clear, I'm not talking of a DAO or a decentralized autonomous organization because a DAO is a voting smart contract that decides how to invest money stored in a smart contract. But in this case, we're just voting on some proposal. There is no movement of money. The next project ID is to do an Ether wallet. You will create a smart contract that is able to receive and redraw Ether as well as transfer Ether to another address. So compared to just a normal addresses that hold some Ether, a smart contract like this is not specially useful, but we are just doing this for learning. And later, when you will be more advanced, you can try to build what we call a smart wallet. This is basically a smart contract wallet that has a little bit more feature than what I explained, but this is not a project for beginners. So for this Ether wallet smart contract, you're just gonna do something super simple. And this will teach you the basics of manipulating Ether in a smart contract, which is super important because the superpower of smart contract lies in their ability to transfer money. You will also need to do some access control because if anybody is able to redraw the Ether from the smart contract, then anybody can steal your money. So you'll probably need to use a required statement in order to do this access control. The next project ID is to do a multi-send smart contract. With a multi-send smart contract, you will be able to send Ether to a list of addresses. So this can be very useful, for example, if you are using a smart contract to pay your employees. Technically, you'll probably need to use a for loop and as argument of the function, you will need to pass an array of addresses. So you're gonna learn a few things by building this project. The next project ID is to do a time lock smart contract. So a time lock smart contract is a wallet that is locked for a certain amount of time. There are many applications to a time lock, but one of the biggest one is to control your own emotions. So 
when the crypto market crashes, we have a tendency to sell our crypto. But that's a shame because if we really want to make some really high profit in crypto, we need to be able to hold our crypto for a very long time. And one way of doing this is to lock in your crypto in smart contracts so that it's not even possible to withdraw your crypto for a certain time. So it's going to be a more advanced iteration on the Ether wallet basically. The next project I did is to create an ERC20 token. So in the blockchain world and in DeFi or decentralized finance, the main kind of asset that we manipulate beside Ether is ERC20 token. So Ether is the native crypto of Ethereum, but with token smart contract, we can also create as many assets as we want in Ethereum. It's like a crypto in the crypto. And most of the money transfer in the crypto world, they are actually with ERC20 tokens. So it's extremely important that you understand how it works. So there is a standard for ERC20 tokens. So in order to do this project, you probably need to learn these standards. And basically with an ERC20 token, this is a ledger that maps addresses to balances of token and each owner is able to transfer his token to another address. So the concept is pretty simple. There are some libraries like OpenZipLink that allow you to create ERC20 token very simply, but since you are learning, it's better to build it from scratch. However, later, when you will release a token in production, you will probably want to use the OpenZipLink library and not your custom implementation. The next project I did is to do a wallet for ERC20 token. So it will be a smart contract that has a function to deposit token, another function to withdraw token, and also another function to transfer token to another address. This is going to be interesting because you're going to learn how you can manipulate ERC20 tokens. This is slightly more complex than manipulating Ether because there is something called a delegated transfer. So you will need to learn this. A variation of this project is to do a multi-sig wallet. Basically, instead of having a single address that controls the wallet, you will need the approval of several addresses to do a withdrawal or a transfer. There are two ways to do a multi-sig wallet. The best way is by using signature, but it's a little bit complicated for beginners. And another way is just to do the different approvals on chain. So I recommend to use this way as a beginner. The next project idea is to do an airdrop. An airdrop is a mechanism to distribute ERC20 tokens. In an airdrop, you basically give tokens for free. It's a little bit similar to the multi-send project that I mentioned before. Instead that this time you're going to do it with ERC20 token. So the most simple way to implement this is just to send an array of addresses to your smart contract and have a for loop that send the token to this list of address. There are also other ways to implement an airdrop contract, but it's not really for beginners. And the last project ID I have for you is an ICO or initial coin offering. This is another mechanism in order to distribute your ERC20 tokens. It was very used in 2016 and 2017. It basically allow you to sell your tokens against other crypto assets like Ether. So in an ICO contract, you have three phases. The first phase, just after you deploy your contract, nothing happened. Then you're going to execute a function to start the sale of token. From this point, any address will be able to buy some tokens against some Ether, the ICO contract will record the sale. And at the end of the sale period, all the buyers will be able to claim their token by calling another function on the smart contract. So clearly in the 10 ideas I give you, this is the most advanced project. That's why I mention it only at the end. Now you have all these project ideas, it's time to build them. Before you build them, it might be a good idea to learn some Solidity, the programming language for smart contracts. And for that, you can check out my series on Solidities. It covers the main aspect of the language in a series of short videos, and it's one of the most popular series on my channel. After you finish this series, you will be ready to build all the project ideas I mentioned in this video. I will see you next in my series on Solidity.